Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, in which we are discussing adrenoreceptors. Okay, so we're currently in the process of discussing uh, the function of alpha-1 adrenoreceptors, and we want to discuss how they uh, produce smooth muscle contraction, basically. Okay, so we have seen the structure of these contractile units within smooth muscle cells, which consist of these dense bodies. Okay, and I'll draw a little picture of this here, just to remind ourselves. So we have these dense bodies, and uh, from these dense bodies, you have projecting off towards the opposite dense body, you have these actin filaments, okay? So here's another actin filament, and here is another actin filament. Okay, and then from this one over here, you then have actin filaments projecting the other way, towards the other dense body, like so. Okay, and uh, here's a final one. So I'm just showing three of these actin filaments, but of course, in reality, you'll have far more than that. Okay, so I'll color them in red. And in between the actin filaments, you then have uh, myosin filaments, which are slightly larger than the actin filaments. The actin filaments are generally around one micrometer long, okay, whereas the myosin filaments are slightly larger than that. Okay, and the myosin filaments will project in the opposite direction uh, towards, well, sorry, they'll sit in the uh, middle and um, they will overlap with both of the actin filaments. Okay, so. Here then is the myosin filament. Well, there's one myosin filament. Here's another myosin filament. Okay, and we've discussed that the myosin filaments then have uh, these myosin cross bridges uh, coming out from the side of them, basically. Okay, and this is because the myosin filaments themselves are made up of these myosin monomers, and we will use the structure of a functional myosin monomer, which looks like this, okay? But remember, the actual myosin monomers are dimers of these, okay? And you have this tail portion here, this arm portion here, and the head portion here. And remember, the tail, arm, and most of the head is made up of the myosin heavy chain, but the head also contains two myosin light chains. It contains an essential myosin light chain and also a regulatory myosin light chain. Okay, and basically what we now want to discuss is how contraction of these contractile units actually occurs. And basically what's going to happen is the myosin filaments, which are suspended in between the actin filaments from the two dense bodies, these are going to pull on the actin filaments. And these actin filaments of this dense body here will be pulled in this direction. And the actin filaments of this dense body over here will be pulled in the opposite direction, like so. Okay, so the dense bodies will be pulled towards one another, and that's how uh, contraction of this contractile unit occurs. Okay, so we now want to see on a uh, on the level of the myosin uh, cross bridges how basically you're going to pull these actin filaments um, towards the midline, basically. Okay, and this is something called the sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction. Now, basically, the myosin cross bridges, which remember is this term that includes the myosin heads and the myosin arms, which stick out from the myosin filament body, okay, uh, these are going to start interacting with active sites on the actin filaments, okay? So remember we discussed that the actin filaments are these double helixes of uh, F-actin, which are the filamentous actin, those of G-actin molecules polymerized together, okay? Now, basically all over that double helix of polymerized actin, actin molecules, uh, you have binding sites for uh, the myosin heads, okay? And uh, these are called the active sites of the myosin filaments. Now, where actually are these active sites of the myosin filament? Well, if I get my picture of the myosin filament back again, okay, here's our myosin filament. What I didn't tell you at the time was that actin filaments actually have ADP, bound to them, okay? So all of these little actin monomers will have an ADP molecule bind to the, bound to them, and it is believed that the ADP molecule that is bound to all of these um, 
actin monomers. Uh, that that is the active site basically. That's the site where uh, the myosin head binds to the actin monomer. Okay, so you have all of these active sites on the actin filaments. Okay, right. So we now want to look at the sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction. Now the first thing to say is how do you actually initiate the sliding filament of muscle contraction in smooth muscle cells? Well, it's not the way you do it in skeletal muscle cells. In skeletal muscle cells, troponin senses a rise in calcium and then alters the structure of tropomyosin, uh, which is round, wound around the actin filaments. And when there's no calcium present, the troponin holds the tropomyosin in a position that occludes the active sites of the um, actin um, filament. Okay, it's not like that in smooth muscle. Instead, the regulation occurs on the level of the myosin heads. Okay, so the active sites on the actin molecules are always present. Okay, so instead what actually happens is that the regulatory myosin light -like chain becomes phosphorylated and that activates the myosin cross bridge uh, to actually begin uh, the sliding filament mechanism basically. Okay, so let's now have a look at what the sliding filament mechanism is. So basically, we also need to start by talking about the uh, intrinsic GTPA, sorry, ATPA's activity of the myosin head. Okay, so if we draw our little myosin functional monomer here, the head actually has the ability to hydrolyze ATP. Now, long before the sliding filament mechanism is actually going to begin, i.e. long before contraction is actually activated, ATP will come and bind to the head, and it will be hydrolyzed by the intrinsic ATPase uh, of the head to ADP and inorganic phosphate. So it will go from this to this. Okay, so instead it will now have ADP bound to it, and a phosphate bound to it. Now, I should just say that we are going to look at this mechanism for one side of the uh, myosin filament, basically. So you remember me telling you that the myosin filaments can be divided into two halves. Uh, the half that services the actin filaments of this side, and the half that services the actin filaments of this side, and um, the actin, the what, well, the myosin filament on this side is going to be pulling these actin filaments on this side in this direction here, and the myosin filament, uh, the half of the myosin filament on this side is going to be pulling the actin filaments on this side in this direction. And we know that the way this is achieved is by having the orientation of the myosin filaments in the opposite direction. So the tail is always pointing into the midline and therefore the head is pointing towards the dense body. Okay, uh, so we now want to look at um, the sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction, i.e. how these myosin heads are going to interact with the actin filament and pull it in this direction. And we're going to look at it for a uh, myosin functional monomer here on this side here. Okay, so before contraction is actually initiated, the um, myosin functional monomer will get ATP bound to the head, and basically the head will then use its intrinsic ATPase activity to hydrolyze this into ADP and inorganic phosphate. Now, so all of the myosin filaments heads uh, have got ADP and inorganic phosphate bound to them before contraction actually begins. Now, when something, when some sort of signal comes, which we ha haven't discussed yet, but we're going to discuss it, when the alpha-1 receptor becomes active, what it's going to lead to, and we'll look exactly at how this works, is it's going to lead to the phosphorylation of the myosin light -like chain, specifically the regulatory myosin light -like chain of the myosin heads. And now suddenly we'll, they will be activated and they can interact with the active sites on the uh, actin uh, filament. Okay, so basically after phosphorylation what's going to happen is this um, myosin head here is going to interact with the actin filament. So here's the actin filament, so it binds to the active filament, it binds to an active site on the active filament, actin filament. At the moment it's got ADP and inorganic phosphate bound to it and I just want to stress 
that this inorganic phosphate here is not the same inorganic phosphate that was phosphorylated onto uh, the regulatory myosin light chain. Okay, uh, This inorganic phosphate came from the hydrolysis of ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate. Okay, That was present even before the myosin um, subunit had been phosphorylated, okay? Uh, so long before the myosin light chain regulatory portion had been phosphorylated, you already had this phosphate group on. So this phosphate group is not meant to represent the one that's been added on to the myosin light chain uh, regulatory portion. Okay, right. Uh, so um, what's now going to happen is something called the power stroke, okay? So remember, we are looking at this on this side, okay? We've got a uh, monomer, a myosin monomer here, which is bound to the actin filament, and it wants to pull the actin filament in this direction. So what's going to happen? Well, basically, you get what's known as the power stroke, which is where the myosin head um, tilts relative to the arm, okay? So let me show this. So here's the tail, here's the arm, what will happen is the myosin head will tilt so that it's no longer sort of sitting perpendicular, instead it's sort of sitting on this angle, and it drags the entire um, actin filament with it, okay? So when it tilts, it's going to drag the actin filament with it. Now, what direction is that it going to drag the actin filament in? Well, it's tilting in this direction. It's tilting over to down towards the act the myosin filament here. So it's going to draw drag the actin filament in this direction here. So that indeed is going to move the actin filament in the direction that we were aiming for, basically. Okay, so this step here where the um, head of the myosin filament um, subunit um, tilts down like this is known as the power stroke. Okay, and when it undertakes the power stroke, this conformational change allows the ADP molecule and also the inorganic phosphate molecule to cleave off. So the ADP cleaves off and also the inorganic phosphate cleaves off. Okay, so the ADP and the inorganic phosphate have now cleaved off uh, that head of the myosin monomer. Okay, and now what will happen is once the ADP and the inorganic phosphate have cleaved off, then that means this myosin head now has uh, a binding site that is free for an ATP molecule to come in. So what will happen is an ATP molecule, the denosine triphosphate, will come in here, it will bind to the myosin head, and when it does that, it causes the myosin head to cleave away from uh, the active site on the actin filament that it was bound to. Okay, so it abandons uh, the actin filament now, and the head is still currently in this tilted position relative to the arm here, like so. But now it's got ATP mo uh, an ATP molecule bound to it here, so this is ATP here. And then what will happen is the head will hydrolyze the ATP molecule to ADP and inorganic phosphate, and when it does that, it will retilt uh, back to its original position. Okay, so here's the actin filament, and the actin filament is going to stay where it has been dragged to by the power stroke, basically. Meanwhile, what will happen is the head will now return to its original position, and now it will have ADP bound to it, and also an inorganic phosphate molecule bound to it. So here's the ADP, here's the inorganic phosphate. Okay, right, and then this uh, myosin head combines to the an active site of the actin uh, filament again, and it will be able to go through the cycle again. So it's now capable of going back to this stage. But the important thing to understand is it will now bind to an active site that is further along than the active site that it bound to previously. So just to emphasize this, if we say this portion of the actin filament that I've just highlighted in blue is the active site that it originally bound to, then this active site is remaining here, and it will be now down here. Okay, so the next active site that this um, myosin head will bind to will be further along, somewhere down here, and this is how this myosin head is going to gradually move the actin filament uh, inwards, basically.
now you can imagine that the same thing will happen but in reverse on this side so the reflection of what's happening over here will happen over there and it will be moving this actin filament in this direction so the overall result is that these myosin functional monomers are moving uh, the actin filaments into the midline towards the midline and that's going to drag these two dense bodies towards one another Okay, and of course you won't just have two uh, myosin monomers, you'll have these all over the place and they'll all be working continuously to move the actin filaments inwards and dragging the dense bodies in. And when this happens, for all of these contractile units between all of the dense bodies within the smooth muscle cell, then the entire smooth muscle cell is going to be contracted in, and that's how a smooth muscle cell contracts. So what we now need to turn our attention to is how uh, activating the alpha-1 receptors leads to uh, the activation of this contraction. And we know what activates the contraction. It is the phosphorylation of the myosin light chain, specifically the regulatory myosin light chain. So remember, each of the uh, my myosin uh, functional monomers has two myosin light chains, an essential myosin light chain and the regulatory myosin light chain. It's the regulatory myosin light chain that needs to be phosphorylated in order for that functional myosin monomer to to start actually um, taking part in the sliding filament mechanism. Okay, and this is how uh, these contractile units within the smooth muscle cell will contract. So in the next video, what we need to see is how uh, activation of the alpha-1 uh, re adrenoreceptor uh, is going to lead to the phosphorylation of the uh, myosin light chain, specifically the regulatory myosin light chain. Okay, but we'll do that in the next video.